Good morning students. We are learning water resource engineering and we are discussing about groundwater hydrology. In today's session, we will discuss about few groundwater formations and the well hydraulics. Well, starting the chapter with few terminology related to the groundwater that is aquifer, aquiclude, aquitard and aquifuge. Well, what is aquifer? An aquifer may be defined as a geological formation that contains sufficient permeable material which permits storage as well as the movement of water through itself under the ordinary field condition such as we can say uh, sands and gravel they permits water to pass through it. Next what is aquiclude? This may be defined as a geological formation of relatively impermeable material which permits storage of water but it does not capable of transmitting the water in the sufficient quantity that is clay. Now if we talk about the aquitard it is a geological formation that has a poor permeability but through which seepage is possible and hence it does not yield the water freely to the wells. It may be transmitted vertically in a appreciable quantities of water to or from the adjacent aquifers. While defining aquifuge, it is a for geological formation of relatively impermeable material which neither contains nor transmit the water that we can consider as a solid rocks which does not contain water and it also not allow the water to pass through it okay so that is four major important geological formation which helps us to understand a many more concept in this lecture so let's see what are the types of aquifer well Basically, uh, aquifers are classified into two categories that is confined and unconfined aquifer. Well, if we talk about the unconfined aquifer, it is the one in which the water table forms the upper surface of the zone of saturation. Here you can see the unconfined aquifer. Okay. Well, an aquifer where the water table is the upper surface limit and extend below till the impermeable strata that is known as the unconfined aquifer well the impermeable layer underlying an unconfined aquifer may be made of clay there can be made of shell or igneous rock or the bad rock unconfined aquifer is also known as a free aquifer it is also called as a water table aquifer and non artesian aquifer also the water table is not a stationary surface yes but it rises when more water enters into the aquifer that is maybe from the natural or artificial recharge and it drops when the recharge is less okay and the previously stored water flows out towards streams or wells or any points of uh, groundwater discharge that we can say the at the outlet now a well driven into a unconfined aquifer will indicate a static water level that corresponding to the water table level at some particular location so whenever you are inserting a well inside the unconfined aquifer that will indicate you about the water level the static water level okay now if we talk about the confined aquifer when a aquifer is sandwiched between two impermeable layer generally known as the confined aquifer it's sometimes also known as the pressure aquifer or the artesian aquifer well Properly, if we define the confined aquifer, this is the aquifers, those are completely filled with the water and that do not have a free water table. 
well a confined aquifer is, is the one in which the groundwater is confined under the pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure maybe by overlaying the relatively impermeable strata okay now water enters a confined aquifer in an area where the confining bed rises to the surface okay now uh, also there is a kind of aquifer which known as the flowing well now these two are the aquifers now if we talk about uh, some wells then the first is flowing well well a confined aquifer is analogous to a pipelines yes if there is a well in this particular confined layer the water in the well will rise up to the prismatic head now if the prismatic head is above the ground then the water from the well in this layer will flow over the ground and then such kind of well is known as the flowing well well talking about the artesian well if the water level in a well in confined aquifer is above the upper confining layer but it is below the ground level then such type of well is known as the artesian well well the ground water can also move to the ground surface to the natural passage like falls or the sinkholes where the rise and fall of water level in the well penetrating a confined aquifer resulting mainly from the changes in the pressure rather than the changes in the storage volumes and hence the confined aquifer shows only the small changes in the storage volume now the last one that is the perched aquifer well when an impermeable social shaped stratum of a small aerial extent that occurring in the zone of aeration may retain and hold some amount of water into it and that is known as the perched aquifer it yields a limit quantity of water because usually this kind of aquifers are not recharged now let's discuss about well hydraulics when a well is penetrated into an extensive homogeneous aquifer the water table initially remains horizontal in the well now when the well is pumped water is removed from the aquifer then this process resulting in a circular depression or the drawdown of the curve so at any point away from the well the drawdown is probably in the vertical distance by which the water table or the prismatic surface is getting lowered well dupuy thin made a theory that is based on the few assumptions and those are that aquifer is a homogeneous the well that penetrates and receives the water from the entire thickness of the aquifer the second that the velocity of the flow is proportional to the tangent of the hydraulic gradient instead of the sine values well also the flow is assumed as a horizontal and uniform everywhere okay the coefficient of transmissibility is taken as a constant at all the places and at all the time also natural groundwater regime affecting an aquifer that remains constant throughout the time periods and the flow is assumed as a laminar so that here the darcy's law can be applicable so these are the assumptions that made for deriving this theory well this theory is derived for two different aquifers also for the confined aquifer and unconfined aquifer well the steady state flow to the wells in the unconfined aquifer a particular schematic diagram is shown over here 
that one well is penetrated in the unconfined aquifer and by pumping the water is taken out and at such place how the geological strata act like that is shown in the figure well here small r is the radius of the well capital r is the radius of zero drawdown capital h is the thickness of the aquifer from the impermeable layer to the initial water table well small s is the drawdown at the well and capital h is the depth of water that measured in the well above the impermeable layer so in this theory we just have to derive the formula for the discharge in such unconfined aquifer for the steady state flow well as in the assumptions we have assumed that the flow is laminar so we can apply the darcy's law so according to the darcy's law the discharge is equals to k into a into i where a is equal to cross sectional area of the flow and i is equals to hydraulic gradient that is dy by dx now this hydrological gradient is assumed at a particular point okay that here we have considered as a p so when the pumping is to be done this kind of depression cone will be occurred now here uh, we are coming back with the ix ix is the hydraulic gradient and a x ax is the cross sectional area which is 2 pi xy and i is equal to dy by dx so q is equals to k into 2 pi xy into dy by dx now let's uh, separate the x term at the one side and y term at the dip different side so q into dx upon x that will be equals to 2 pi ky into dy now this is for a particular point that is p now if we want to discharge for all the well then we need to do the integration so the integration between the limits that is from small r to the capital r okay for the height of h to small h well q is integration from small r to capital r dx upon x is equals to 2 pi k that is the constant value so we have uh, kept aside uh, as a constant and integrating y dy with the limits of small h to the capital h okay so 1 upon x that is log x and integration y that is y square by 2 so q into log x limits are from small r to capital r 2 pi k y square by 2 small h to capital h so now here 2 and 2 will be cancelled out okay so q will be pi into k h square minus small h square upon log r upon r actually it would be log r minus log small r but in the log formation if in between there is a subtraction so that can be written as a log r upon r so this would be the discharge now if we apply the value of pi and if we convert this uh, log e value into log 10 base then the q will be 1.36 k into h square minus small h square upon log r by r base 10 so this is the deputes formula to find out the discharge from the well well here small r can be computed as 3000 small s into root k whereas is the drawdown but k is the darcy's coefficient of permeability so if in case uh, we are solving any example okay and if the r value is not given but they have given the darcy's coefficient then you can find out the value of r from it now if there are two wells are radially distanced till that 
we have discussed about only a one val which is driven into the unconfined aquifer but if in case there are two wells which is radially uh, distance as r1 and r2 value and the depth of water for those wells observation wells are h1 and h2 then the discharge can be find out by 1.36 small k into small h2 square minus h1 square upon log r2 by r1 base 10. So if you are given with the data of two different observation well at such place you need to this formula and if you have only one well then the previous formula can be used. Now if the drawdown is measured at the phase of the well so at such place s is equals to capital H minus small h. If we take the small h value at s side then it would be plus so capital H would be s plus h. Now if we need to find out the value of capital H plus h then we need to add small h value at both the end. So if we say h plus small h then in the different side there would be s plus 2h. Okay, so now we have two different value for capital H minus H that is S and for capital H plus H the value is S plus 2H. Now the discharge formula that is pi k into H square minus H square upon log R upon R. Now H square minus small H square that can be written as this that is equals to pi k into capital H minus small H and capital H plus small H upon log R upon R. Now here we are having these two values that is capital H minus small h and capital H plus small h. So pi k into s into s plus 2h log r upon r. Now here we are measuring the drawdown at the phase of the well. So small h would be total length of the strainer. So if we substitute this value in the above equation then Q is equals to pi k into s plus s plus 2l upon log r upon r. Uh, now if we keep this two value as a common then 2 pi k into s into s by 2 plus l upon log r upon r. So this is the discharge value when we are measuring the drawdown at the face of the well. So this small small things you have to keep in mind while you are solving the example. So this was the theory to find out the discharge for the steady state flow to the wells of unconfined aquifer. I hope students you understand this theory properly. Thank you so much for your kind attention. I will see you in the next lecture.